Don't it appear the other that if I don't visit, I'm not a Ugandan. No, be a Ugandan, visit a community, Mijam. Briefly, we have some five uh, Mijams that are implementing a UNESCO project under the ICH program, Intangible Cultural Heritage. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I want to inform you that the project is moving on well. And as we talk, we have, uh, uh, have uh, sub-granted those five committee museums and we equipped them with a projector and a laptop to be showing some, uh, to be showcasing their items on a computer and uh, using the projector. I think it is one way of going more uh, forward. But out of 27 committee museums we have in the country, under Wukoma, only five have benefited. We are still yearning to get for the other 22. So if there is anybody out there with a, a, a projector who can help us access one, please can you come to our aid. Finally, Mr. Commissioner, thank you for inviting Wukoma to this, under this program. And thank you so much. We are grateful and we are ready to work with you whenever called upon. Thank you for listening. My names are Chitaulwa Abraham. I happen to be a prince among the princes of Basoka. And by God's chance, I'm a father of twins. So I carry the title of Visa Abirie. That is not a name. So God bless you. Thank you so much. And possibly one thing we forgot, we are not too many now. Possibly we can know whom we are talking to. Can we first have everyone introduce themselves? And uh, they, on the table you'll introduce yourself as you talk. Yeah. Let's have a chance each one to introduce themselves. And uh, possibly the institutions or their interest in the museum or the cultural heritage. Um, uh, hello, my name's Samra. And um, I'm an artist based in England. And my interest in the museum is for research purposes. And I'm here at this event by coincidence because part of my feedback in the form to the museum was about criticality surrounding like decolonial practices in a museum. So I'm interested to hear what these new approaches to museums are. Welcome. Hello everyone, Hello. my name is Waswa Chisule and I'm a graduate trainee at uh, Uganda Christian University and I'm also uh, very interested in issues around uh, decolonization and restitution as well as cultural heritage. That's why I'm here today. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is, is Emmanuel Semwanga. Emmanuel Semwanga. I represent a group of enthusiasts in Uganda who own vintage cars. Uh, it is called the Vintage and Collectible Fellowship of Rotary. We own uh, most of the, uh, the, the, the cars that were owned in Uganda. On top of that, I personally collect collectibles, those items that were used in our homes, offices, and the like, with an intention of uh, setting up a museum once the collection is big. I thank you for being part of this and looking forward for a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicholas Kajova. I work with New Vision. I basically, my emphasis basically do with art. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kambent Okashias. I work with Parliament Museum as a museum creator. Uh, our role is to preserve the history and uh, the heritage, heritage of Uganda. Good evening, everyone. I am called Pak Tinyefuza. 
I work with Parliament of Uganda as a museum registrar, and we are glad to be here so that we can share notes on how we can develop our museums. And basically, the main reason why the Parliament Museum was established is to preserve Uganda's history and its democratic heritage. So you were talking about the intangible heritage, and we are more interested in that field as well. So I thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Kadui Joanita, and I'm a graduate from Deja University. I'm here to know more about the museum. Good evening, Gent ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patrick Yoa Blenzi. Um, I used to work at the Uganda Museum from 1958 to 1966, and with the Department of Antiquities from 1966 to 1973, and with the UNESCO from 73 to 1999, 1998. Today is a good day for me because I was first appointed here as a trainee museum assistant on the 15th of December, 1958. So that's 60. Three years ago. <laughs> I've worked with the museum in Nsongezi, Bigobia Mugenyi, in a park, and various places. We went to Chigezi, we made a film, wire drawing film. So I think this is good, it's giving me good memories. I have found new friends, and I want to make more, more friends. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mary Tenyua Sevadao. I work with Bank of Uganda, Conservation Manager. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Hello, good evening. My name is Businja Vanita Faith. My story is in Uganda Heritage. I'm here because I'm a heritage queen and because heritage is connected to the museum. I'm glad to be here. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Locheng Jamai Marut, the current Miss Tourism Karamoja. I am here uh, under Miss Tourism Uganda and because I love tourism and also the museum is part of tourism. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. And uh, not forgetting, you can reintroduce yourself. Hmm. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Daphne Nawera. Sales and Marketing Manager for Igongo Culture Center. I'm here representing the Igongo Museum. Thank you. So you are all most welcome. And uh, in this break, possibly, uh, I would like this gentleman also to introduce himself. We usually don't introduce yourselves. And who are you? Uh, I'm called William. Uh, I initially didn't know about this, but it's a great opportunity for me to know more about my country and where we've come from. So I'm privileged to be here. And the cameraman, we don't know you too, then we can carry on. Uh, I thank you for this opportunity, Mr. MC. I'm by the names of Lukwa Godens. I work with the Minister of Tourism, World Life and Antiquities, under this Department of Museums and Monuments as a conservator. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, please, okay, we could continue now with our program. Uh, may, may CCFU take the opportunity to talk to us. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. My name is Amoni, because my name is Amoni Chitoke, um, except I, I have an I at the end. You might, don't ha you might not have an I at the end. So that, that is the only difference. And I'm also called Chitoke. Um, I am glad to be here. I was very threatened when uh, we started without introducing ourselves because I, I know that the conversation we are having has a very different, it's, it's on a terrain which is, uh, which is very global and uh, we need to have the right minds in our country to take it forward. As I said, my name is Amon Chitoke. I work at the Cross Culture Foundation of Uganda. I'm the Deputy Executive Director. My colleague, Frederick Insvambi, has been in this project um, and taking forward the conversations on Museum Futures Africa. And so, because he's um, on a trip to Western Uganda, I am representing him but we have had a conversation on what has been happening and um, I am presenting partly his perspectives and um, mostly mine. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa is at a time when very unprecedentedly we are having attention, especially to what is truly ours, that has been taken away from us whether it was ferried away or it was left here. Much of actually what needs to still be restituted was left in our communities. How it is presented is what we need to liberate ourselves from. The global conversation is on restitution of what was taken away, uh, whether on steamers or by plane or whatever means uh, our colonizers used to take them away from our communities. But that really cannot return and be comfortable here until we have prepared the right ground for us. And that is why this conversation on museum futures is important at this time. I recently had um, a, a meeting of, of um, what we call national trusts. There is an organization called International National Trusts Organization. We abbreviate it as INTO. It's based in the United Kingdom. That's where the Secretariat is. But it is a network of currently 90 organizations in different countries that are focusing on uh, promoting and preserving our cultural heritage. And in Africa, there is so far out of the 90, only eight members, and Uganda is privileged to be one of them, not represented by the government, although we call, we call ourselves a representative of Uganda, because, well, we are the Cross Culture Foundation of Uganda, but it's a private organization. National trusts work to promote cultural heritage. First of all, safeguard, promote, and then we educate ourselves about them. At the summit which we recently held of uh, the African chapter of the International National Trust Organization, we had a conversation that was around the classics. The classics, what do we consider the classics, whether in literature or in music or in law or any other. If you have gone to law school here, you will know that most, much of what is taught is about British law. Right? If you have been to a literature class, you will, not have, you will not graduate without reading a literature textbook, a literature novel, I mean a Shakespearean play. You will not graduate without reading um, Sophocles. Right? In mathematics, what do we read? In physics, what do we read? So the question is, what are the classics that we're presenting ourselves with? And uh, I would like to highlight three key points from the conversation that we had. Um, we had uh, Sister uh, DiPio from Makerere, some of us might know her. She presented a paper from which I took three, the three points that I am going to highlight. The three key points are for us to be able to 
to prepare the right ground for the future that we want for our cultural heritage, first of all, we need to do documentation. Secondly, we need to theorize. And three, we need to canonize. Now, I will go one by one. In terms of documentation, really, it's about capturing what is ours and from our perspective. Because a lot, if, uh, if you walked to one of the shelves here, um, we have the prehistoric presentations here. And you walk to any of the shelves, you will see words like witches, you will see words like, if you are looking at the narrative on Walumbe here, you will probably not have the Buganda version of Walumbe. You will probably not have the Bagisu version of Walumbe, the Bamasaba version. You will not have the Tsoga version of Walumbe. And yet these are the communities that we are purporting to present in our National Museum. So the question is, whose perspective? How are we documenting what we are documenting? How are we presenting it? That is why we need to think about what we want to aspire for in the next period. The second aspect is about theorization. And theorization really touches the aspect of the science be behind what is ours. The aspect of the science behind what we are presenting, not from a perspective that is away from our own community's perspective, but the science from my grandmother's perspective, not the science from the laboratory that is at Makerere University, um, and that has inherited a knowledge system that is beyond what we want to present our, our, ourselves. The third aspect on canonization is to really set the standards that we have set ourselves. And I know it is a radical, it's a radical point of view, but unless that kind of radicalism is going to come to our table, it is going to be very, very hard to even welcome the kinds of artifacts that are now being presented in the British Museum and all other such museums and have them here. Many of the people that are against restitution are presenting a narrative that we are not yet ready to receive these um, aspects of our heritage. And the question here is, who determines the readiness, right? Who determines the readiness? What tenets are we using? What lenses are we using? If, for example, the crown of the Omukama of Bunyoro is supposed to be kept with other royal regalia, and the regalia exists, there is a room where it is supposed to be. Why not return it, put it in with the other royal regalia? You are saying that I'm not ready, because you want me to put it in a glass shelf at the National Museum. That is the readiness you are talking about. As for me, if I am a Munyoro, I want that part of the regalia to go to the, where the other regalia belong. And there I am ready. So the question is, what do we do when we are defining our, uh, our concepts? Who says we are not ready? And it is for, uh, for us actually to define and justify that we are actually ready. And maybe they are right. If we have not heard from you on your readiness and your perspective, then we shall, we shall say what we want. We shall say you are not ready until you come and prove us wrong. Yeah? In, med, in, um, in uh, legal perspectives, they say you are guilty and you are innocent until proven guilty. But I opine that the, 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 the opposite is actually true. You are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. Otherwise, why, do you, why would you be in custody? And that is the situation we are in. Africa must prove that we are innocent until, eh? until they prove us that we are guilty. Okay? So what is required at the moment? We need to do three things. We need consciousness. We need boldness, and we need cautiousness. Consciousness, being aware. Boldness, standing up to the truth. And the truth, by our definition. And cautiousness, making sure 
that what we are doing does not lead us into a less privileged situation and therefore a worse situation than we are now. The second thing is we need to take action. And on this, I'm really grateful to the National Museum, to the Uganda National Museum, for taking lead on this project, and to the partners on the project, Uganda Community Museums Association, Uganda National Cultural Center, my own organization, the Cross Cultural Foundation of Uganda, and the rest of us, for really taking this, this action. Because without action, we are not going to go anywhere. We, shall, we can have conversations like this. But, well, for three or four minutes now, I'm only rambling. Unless we take what I'm saying in action, then we shall just be running in circles. Okay? So the Museum Futures Project is really right into this, this, uh, this uh, in the straight uh, direction of this conversation. We need to know how we are going to present my, mother, my grandmother's perspective. My grandmother does not read. If she does not read, how do I make sure that her perspective, undistorted, is presented in the National Museum? Will I hold a camera and take her narrative and maybe caption it for anyone, understandably, who would not understand her language? That is the farthest maybe we can go at the moment. We need to make sure that we digitize for our children. I recently acquired some uh, films that were produced up, uh, up as part of um, the Makerere Innovation Fund project that was led by Sister DPO again and other colleagues from Makerere. It's, it documents four aspects of uh, cultural heritage and uh, one of the narratives that is uh, presented in cartoon and narrative is from the Madi community. It's called Lia and Origa. Now, I have a practice of uh, when I'm uh, speaking to my children and showing them something that, um, that is important, I normally first show them, let's say it's a, it's a cartoon film. They see it to the end, and then I ask them to, to give me, to, to give me to their interpretation of it, narrate it again. And when they narrated it, my four-year daughter would not want to look at this film. It presents uh, the narrative of a girl who was um, very stubborn and got into trouble. Long story short, my, my four-year-old daughter would not watch it a, a second time because somewhere in the narrative, this girl was cut by her father, like beheaded, mistakenly, yeah? So she would not watch it again. But there is a character called Origa in that narrative that has now become the scarecrow in my house because every time one of them is misbehaving, they will say you'll have Origa on your back. So it's becoming a behavior change agent in my house, okay? So how, what do we show our children? And yet these kids have been seeing cartoons, I mean, for long. But one narrative is changing situations in my house. And that is what we need to do. Um, Mr. Kizalwa, uh, thank you very much for hosting us and for taking this project forward. I want to invite all of us to join the narrative um, contribute from your area of expertise. If you are a singer, sing about it. If you are a researcher, research about it. If you are at the Bank of Uganda, and thank you very much for having the Nyonyintono Chikonyogo Museum. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, it, it would be very hard to think that a bank would have a museum in it. It's, I mean, do a, make a contribution from where you are. Everybody, every one of us has a part to play in this conversation. Mr. Um, Seba Gala here does the hot thing, eh? House of Talent, we just abbreviate it as hot, eh? And it's really hot. He plays music that is exclusively ours, eh? And, yeah, I am very much impressed with his contribution to, to the narrative that we want to see for ourselves. 
Thank you very much. I think I've, sp uh, um, I've taken much more than uh, we, we, I needed to take, but I hope that uh, we can all contribute to this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Amon Chitoke. And on behalf of CSFU, we, we are very grateful for honoring this invitation and for also, as an institution, to allow your member to be part of this study group and participate fully on, on duty or even off duty, because sometimes we would engage Fred when he's up country on our, in our Zoom conversations and so that he doesn't miss because we know you're a busy team there. But thank you so much and uh, thank you so much for honoring also this invitation. Uh, I think because of time I could go, I, I invite Mr. Chisal Samuel to take on the, the, st the stage. Thank you, sir. Uh, the invi chief who invited guests, the senior museum professional, Mr. Abulenzi, Museum curators around, heads of institutions, invited guests, the Miss Uganda to Tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, I warmly welcome you to the National Museum of Uganda. Apologies from the Commissioner Museums who has not been able to make it because of other commitments. But nonetheless, we warmly welcome you to this function. My name is uh, Samuel Alfred Kizalwa. I'm the Assistant Commissioner, Museums. At the same time, I'm happy to be the President of ICOM, Uganda National Committee. ICOM is the International Council of Museums, of which Mr. Bullens has been a long-serving member of it, the first member, and until 2018 is when others joined in, when we had formed the National Committee. We welcome you to this function, of which theme I received as facing our past, rethinking future museums. And it is a project that has been undertaken by a number of professionals from various institutions, but headed by this institution, Uganda Museums. Museums, where I work for, for more than 25 years now, are historical sites and historical sites of purpose. When museums acquire, they acquire unique objects, objects that can disappear if not well kept. And yet, they have value. Museums don't acquire anything. We acquire valuables. And in our terminology, we call them priceless objects because once it disappears, you may never replace it. Replicas are there, which resemble what we have, but they may not be the original. And therefore, Whatever is collected by a museum should be jealously kept so that it doesn't disappear. And disappearance in conservation terms follows several routes. The first one is safety, others are negligence, others are due to poor staff practices, poor practices. Pests attack them, humidity, 
kills them, fire can attack, so many factors of which any museum profession is expected to undertake as a study. We are very glad that the National Museum started far back in 1908 and indeed it is regarded as the oldest museum in East Africa. It's the oldest. And therefore, that means it has original objects. Most of the objects collected since then are existing. But it has taken a long route before it established itself here. It started from Entebbe at the colonial site, expanded the, its collection, moved it to Fort Lugard, the original Fort Lugard before it was shifted elsewhere. The collection was still expanding. It went to the School of Fine Art, Margaret School of Fine Art in 1944. From where this historical building was established in 1954 to house as the National Museum. It is a historical building with historical objects. Of course, at 1954, when they established this institution, much as the headship was by the colonial colonialists, but most of the staff implementing the displays and the storage purpose were Africans. I wonder if Mr. Blaine's was, I was correct. I think you had ex, you are you are part of the museum at that time. But notably, I know that the late second, but I will be calling him second. in this museum. He was a great artist. He displayed them under the guidance of the colonialists. But the exhibits are African. The, the showcases are African. <laughs> they don't have influence of the, the colonial master. The collections themselves are African. The literature you see as the exhibit secrets is African. And therefore, the museum doesn't, much of, doesn't have much of the colonial you know, influence one would think about, in my own opinion. And like I said, I joined the museum around 1992 under the guidance of searching to the founder of this museum as an exhibition office. And I was lucky that in 1993 I went to train in conservation management of museums of sub-Saharan Africa at the Joe Center for Museum Studies. It was a UNESCO center where Mr. Williams worked and it was established basically to train Africans in management of their museums. What happened, therefore, after the training, we trained for a whole year, was to prolong, we come back to prolong the existence of these collections, to give them more life to give them more life, so that they don't disappear very fast. And some of the changes we were making in this institution were geared towards preventive conservation. Preventive conservation is all about the care of the environment. Minimize direct contact, minimize direct treatment of objects which was the, 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 the practice during colonial times, 
that you inject in chemicals, now there are no more chemical injections, so that the objects remain as it were. Of course, when you look at our display here, it is old. But it doesn't mean that it is outdated. Because it has the information that re people require. We all know that without history, we cannot exist. If these were the original objects which were made and used by our forefathers, our grandfathers, can you find them on the market anymore? No. The answer is no. <laughs> you will never. So should we say that they are useless? No. They are not useless. They are informative. And people want to know them. But what is missing? There must be a link. A missing link. And which is the concern of the communities we serve. When they visit the Uganda Museum, for instance, they find that whatever they saw, those teachers and their pupils, when they came in the 1980s and are still coming, they find most of the collection is the same on display, which is true. And that's where now people think that they are outdated. But what is important to us as museum professionals and those who work for museums, and I will now come to the Uganda Museum itself, is that there should be a mindset change. People should change their attitudes towards one, their work, towards what they are supposed to do towards the institution mindset and that's why change management is important in institutions yes you leave home coming whether you tell your mother your wife or children or you don't that i'm going to work Every morning you wake up coming to work. But when you arrive at the place of work, what do you do? What do you work? Do you make any delivery? Do you deliver towards the expected outputs? Those are challenges we face in Uganda. And they were worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. Because now everybody can come at leisure. What am I trying to drive at? What was displayed in the past should be linked to the present. There must be a missing gap on display. Yes, that is history. But what happened between history and today? Definitely people were you modifying their artifacts, people were modifying their ways of life, people were inventing other you know, artifacts. And therefore, are we showing that continuity so that people understand the story very well? Think that's what most of our African museums ought to do. When you think of decolonizing museums, and I look at African museums, me, I'm now looking in the context of Uganda Museum. What, what did the, 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 the colonialists take away from Uganda, and most at that time there was only Uganda Museum. What was it? Do we know them? And how did they take them? 
because I happened to have visited the British Museum after our training in Jos, Icrom took us to a tour of all the museums in Europe, and one of them was the British Museum, where they showed that showed us very clearly that this Luzira head was taken from your country. They showed me, which is true, because we have a replica here. They made the replica here. So what arrangement was there? Because they must, they put something, a duplicate of the other, which means they never stole. But there must have been an agreement at that time. But even then, how many we are taken away from Uganda and therefore should stop us from continuing with what we have? That is my thinking now. Yes, we may want the Luzira head back as an original piece, which is a masterpiece like I started, but we need to continue. It will come. It will come. I look at what this the project has tackled, which is facing our past, rethinking future museums. At its initial stage, they came to me when they wanted to revise the showcase of H9, which is the beginning of Uganda, according to the exhibition office at that time. That was his concept of what the beginning of Uganda was. And of course, he had the point, according to me, because exhibition is mainly artwork. Artwork is not mathematics or chemistry or biology. That mathematics, when you add the two plus two, unless when it is in the base ten, it will be four. But the art is not like that. Art is about your perception, your interpretation, and then presentation of what you have in mind. Therefore, he had to show the mode of trade at that time when Uganda started. At which year is not what is indicated, but that is what his concept was. What was the trade like? Exchange of goods. That was that. It was left open. And there are limitations. When we make permanent exhibits, we are limited by space. So limitations were there. You could not explore the entire subject. You must make a representation. Then it is up to the management of the museum, if space allowed, to make other more interpretations of the beginning of, of Uganda. And this could come in the form of temporary exhibitions. That's why museums worldwide emphasize, you know, holding a temporary exhibitions because temporary exhibitions provide for change and change of mindset of their visitors. If each quarter a museum plans to hold the temporary exhibition, either by itself or allowing others to display on, on you know, pertinent subjects like we've been doing, either it is on pandemics or it is on AIDS or it is on nutrition, then that museum will be a living museum. And that's what we are trying to drive at. So that we have a museum which is living, not a static one, a dead one. Those were the terminologies which we are told as we are training us. Most museums, African museums are static. They are dead. You become dead when you don't have much involvement with the communities. To show them what you have, to bring their ideas on board and change, make changes. So, I'm glad that 
the African, the Museum Futures Africa. Oh, I would look at it as the future of African museums, because that is the subject we had at that time. What is the future of African museums? They, are, they have made the beginning on modernizing, on expounding on the past. The past has a rich message, but it is becoming static. Now we need it to become dynamic, so that people see the link between the past and the present. And that one could be done by use of temporary exhibitions or expanding the institution with more galleries, as could be. You, we welcome you. I've talked for long, but I want to assure you that the National Museum has plans to improve beyond what it is now. We plan to digitize the institution so that People have much more stories and much more experience than what you see here in the galleries. And those plans begin the coming financial year. We plan to expand the institution. Come next year, you see that the parking behind there is constructed to have more galleries, more storages, laboratories, and there are four a continuity of what is here shall exist there because funds will be in place to go to the fields to collect and the link between what we have and the, the present. We also there is existence of the I come Uganda National Committee, like I said, which is a national committee under the ICOM International, where Mr. Blaine's worked for long. At the onset, Mr. Blaine's was the only member. We had to fight hard and ensure that we get more members, and we started with 15 members, of which helped us establish the National Committee, recognized by ECOM, and linking the museums in Uganda here. We approached Ukoma chairperson, who has been part of us for long. Unfortunately, he has not yet registered as a member, much as he paid for membership. But now things have been simplified. Mr. Okoma, you will come to me any time and we revive it and you get your membership. We are gearing towards, you know, improving museum services countrywide. Museum services. People should begin museums as museums, not craft shops, not art galleries which are selling things or marketing here and there. No. We are here for protection of the heritage. And above all, there are opportunities for members who join to link with other professionals so that you improve your knowledge, you get opportunities of flying out to attend other workshops and what have you. You get trainings, all those can be availed when you become a member because you are given a dashboard where you access all of them at your own will. So my encouragement is that you join the ICOM National Committee. It is very simple now because the chairperson approves you and you go straight away to get your membership. It is no longer a long journey to go to Paris first. It is the national chairperson with this committee to approve you locally here. Otherwise, we thank you for coming and wish you a nice tour of the temporary exhibition that has been made by the team who have been under this project. Thank you.
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Samuel Chizalwa, the Commi Assistant Commissioner Uganda Museum, and uh, ICOM Uganda President. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom and, the, and encouragement. Uh, I, I would like uh, to, to quicken this process because time is taking us. I'd like to give an opportunity of around less than five minutes to Joseph Sevunya to give us a project brief of what this project is all about. And then we can go for another 15 minutes of curator's conversation. Please take this floor. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are most welcome for this grand opening that is witnessing our journey of, of, of almost a year. What is Museum Futures? Museum Futures Africa is a pan-African um, arrangement where, which is supported by the Guthi Institute uh, South Africa. We are six museums participating in this project and this project is aimed at rethinking African museums. It is aimed at uh, looking at museums in Africa telling African stories. Um, basically this project is creating a platform where it is saying how can we bring African professionals on the continent to create a dialogue or a conversation where they can start solving problems by themselves without waiting for the white color or white men to come and help us solve our own problems. In most cases, uh, we've had so many trainings where we have traveled abroad uh, to go and attend workshops and conferences and all these things. But you come back in Uganda, yet you cannot translate what has been taught to what is happening in Uganda. So uh, what happened when the call came out, we got the opportunity to participate. And uh, we asked ourselves the question, if we want to rethink our museum, what do we need? So uh, the requirements were supposed to have 10 people. And 60% was coming from the museum. 40% was supposed to come from outside. So what we decided to do, we had to get a performative artist, who is Andrew Sebagala from UNCC. We got a visual artist, at the same time a curator, Philip Balimonsi from UNCC, but is the manager of Normal Gallery. We also got uh, a heritage uh, personnel from CCFU, which is represented by um, E.D. Uh, uh, Chitoke. <laughs> And then we also got representation from the community museums, which is represented by uh, Abraham. So what happened, this story has been uh, facilitated by a curriculum, where we've been meeting twice a month to share experiences and conversations and arguments. I don't want to speak much because much is being said in the project that we are about to launch. And given that I'm given only five minutes, I'll ask to stop here because time is against us. Thank you so much. Uh, you can, that, that microphone will need it somewhere here. We, we, according to our program, we are going to have uh, a small discussion, which will start, which will be moderated by Parliamentary Museum. It's from it's a called curator's conversation. So, Mr. Park, I think you'll need to you'll need to take a, a seat in front here, and uh, either you take here or you take there. I don't know which one will be comfortable, or you can or you can take this side so that you can you can possibly sit with the gentleman here. So you're welcome. So, uh, Mr. Park will take the. The moderation, so I, uh, I'll take my leave. And uh, majorly, the conversation is all about curators, and uh, it's, on, it's majorly engaging people who have been part of this conversation. And that is that window here, there. And uh, 
it's only supposed to take 15 minutes maximum. We will allow Mr. Parker as the moderator. You are, I think, after the the conversation, possibly even if it, does, it needs to continue, but you will have to stop it and give the audience an opportunity to get involved. But uh, we need uh, the conversation to start moving. Thank you so much. Uh, there are many, and uh, we thought the, having that everyone should be able to see them from being in that corner. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So, can, you can take your. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Gentlemen. Once again, I have to thank the organizers of this occasion for inviting us to take part in this project. Uh, my name is Tinyafuza Park. I'm a registrar for the Parliamentary Museum. And I'm going to be the one moderating this creator's conversation. I have to say that the topic which you have, actually the theme is good, especially when you are talking about Pan-Africanism, you must be like an African, and therefore whatever you are doing, even if it is a documentation, we are now having a chance of telling our own story because what happens is that other people have been documenting about us. So we're happy that we are on board, that now we can discuss and we see how we can really do things right. And the first question now I think, I don't know who will be answering, it will be random, is how can you tell us how we can Africanize the museums I don't know the context. Yes. Um, thank you so much, moderator. Allow me to humbly appreciate all the members present. Thank you so much. We are deeply honored by your presence. This conversation is not just for the museum or museum practitioners. It's for everyone who feels like they have a story to tell. Uh, the question was, how can we Africanize African museums or oh, museums? Um, when we started the project, we thought we were going to talk about decolonizing the museum because we had such anti-colonial sentiments. Um, but along the way, we realized that um, even with the African history, there is much that we've never touched, that even the colonialists never reached in terms of, um, of, of colonizing. And uh, we thought that instead of decolonizing, we need to look at the concept of Africanizing because even colon uh, the colonial legacy has become part of our history that we cannot um, easily erase. There are some portions we can draw with and uh, this exhibition is an interplay of our proposal as co-curators, we decided to curate with the community, um, um, the community and audiences, even after we leave this venue, the processes are going to continue. By the time, you know, the audience goes into the exhibition and comes back, it will totally be a different space and linking up the exhibition to other spaces. So how can we Africanize? It's one is to tell our African stories by Africans. We need to, um, to embrace who we are as Africans. If we are, we are good at proverbs, let's use proverbs. If we are good orators, let's keep telling the stories. We don't have to, um, to, to look at an African cultural expert as only that person who has attained a degree or that person who has boarded a plane. We need to look at our local custodians, our native custodians of content, and see how we can extract and extrapolate what they have in their heads, in their homes. Every one of us here has a museum in their own capacity. At your home, you have certain things, Biwasikira. That's a museum. That's a memory of your family. So how can we empower the public? and communities to start from that point. That's, that's the way we can Africanize as one of the proposals. And maybe as, as you are 
you can first introduce yourselves because most of them they have not heard from you. Thank you so much. I rarely mention my names <laughs> because it's always a trick to first make my point cut across. I'm Balimunse Philip, the curator of the Uganda National Culture Center and the manager of Nomo Gallery and a member of the Museum Features Uganda study group and a knowledge broker. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, just to add on what my brother Philip was saying, I will not really divert so much. But uh, along the journey as we are trying to, to, to digest ourselves into this thing of Africanization, we asked ourselves, why can't we start qualifying our people? For example, we have people who make back cloth. They have a very rich knowledge. But because the conventional way says you have to go to school and get a PhD, that is where you're recognized and given a platform to speak. And yet these guys are too knowledgeable. But because we don't have facilities to, to qualify them, we end up missing a point. And yet these guys who get PhDs, they come to these guys, they get information, and they write just a small bit which gives them PhDs to be called doctors, yet these guys remain in villages. So it is high time to start appreciating ourselves outside these conversions that are being put up in schools and all these things. For example, I'll give an example of my sister Alice. She has been in the museum for 30 years. Just ask yourself, how many professors and masters, master people have gone through her hands? But what qualification does she have? So can we start having institutions that can qualify their own to reach a point to appreciate ourselves? That is one way we are going to Africanize these things. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. And uh, we have, since we have talked about Africanizing, and they are also talked about decolonization. But now we want to know how can we Africanize or decolonize without uh, distorting history. Because now it means we are, the, the, there is what has been done and what ought to be done. So how do we make sure that we don't distort history? Because we are doing, what we are doing is about conservation and preservation. I'll put a disclaimer. Um, I'm, I'm a museum staff, but what I'm speaking is not just to contradict my profession or anything. But I'll say this. In Uganda, museum studies is something that is just starting. Meaning, 90% of all of us are trained by colo the, the colonial mindset. Are we together? Which simply qualifies that unless we start inviting the communities to be in the processes of telling stories and curating their own stories, there is no way we are going to decolonize because our mindset are still following the policies that are being set by the colonial masters. Do not touch, do not eat in the museum, do not walk, do not do ABCD. But we need to invite the communities to start curating their own stories and that is also one way they are going to appreciate their own heritage. Thank you very much for that point. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. I think in view of what you've said and uh, your concern of um, distorting uh, history, in, uh, yet we expected also to conserve, I think the the theme of our exhibition, which is, for me, I'm a performer. I want to be sure that we know our theme. Do you know our, the theme of our exhibition, which we're yet to experience? Because that's the reason why we're here. So what does it say, if we can say it together? Facing uh -huh. our past, facing our past. thinking future museums. Facing future. our past, thinking future museums. museums. So for me, the answer is in that theme that we chose, that we face our past. We don't run away from our past and then think the future museums. And as such, 
we have taken time as the co-curators for this exhibition we are yet to experience as a study group to face our past, to appreciate it, to engage. Mr. Kizara told you that we engaged him. A number of legendary our curators who have been here, we engaged them, we went to the communities, we've been to, to Iganga uh, to experience the Endeku, hey, you're going to experience a number of things. And to us, even as you see, this is a very young team, the team which is here, and some people are like, why, why are you young people interested in these things of the old? But it was important for us to first face the past and then think. So the distortion is limited or may not be there because we are taking a deliberate move to face our past and then think future museums. Thank you. And maybe what I wanted to add to what um, the two colleagues have submitted is to ask you this question. If we hold on to the memories that we preserve, how sure are we that we are even preserving the right memories? Are they the true memories? Can we quantify that? Can we prove that? So this project gives us an opportunity to face the past and interrogate what we have collected over time and ask our question, this question to the collection. Do you belong to us? Do we relate to you as a collection? How much do we know about you as a collection? Then the next thing will be how can we use you to educate, to communicate to uh, the rest of the community? That's what this exhibition is about. And when it says performative, it means you will perform before you know it. And uh, until maybe someone alerts you that actually you've made a good performance, sometimes you, 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 will you will not notice in this exhibition. So that's what we want to trigger. None of us has the proof. We are not professors to prophesy. <laughs> and that's the reason why we invited communities that own these narratives to sort of relate to them and confirm to, to us that what we have are the true memories, are the true African memories, and what as curators we can do is to rethink how we can communicate this to a broader and a comprehensive audience. So we've turned our processes into a new school of museology that where whoever has participated in this process has picked something, has shared the memory, has learned, it's an experience. That's why some of, uh, of you have actually participated. It was intended to delay the opening, rather the, 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 the mounting of the exhibition, to see how the audience reacts. We wanted to show you the behind the scenes of an exhibition, rather than coming to an already staged cosmetic lie of a narrative. So that's what we intended in this process, and it's still ongoing. Thank you. Yes, we have a question from the audience. Thank you, Chair. My name is Mary Tenyo Sebadao. I want to add my voice to the presenters. I can see like your presentations are still on paper. Maybe it's because we are going to launch today. Many times I've been here to this place the eating place, the restaurant, does not re represent or reflect what we are discussing right now. When we have to Africanize certain things, let, let us look at those things which, which don't demand a uh, ministerial sponsor or uh, anybody to take lead. Oru Juliro. Just think about Olu Juliro. How were we sharing food before? To take away Saniko, or itaka uwo, or vege medi, abantu valye. How was our dining set at that time? If we don't have this right now, then our thinking is still on paper. Let's visit other areas. How were they sharing food? When you move around here, uh, the Japanese restaurant, I think I, st I took some delegates to Jap the Japanese restaurant. The way they sit, they imported their culture here. The Ethiopian restaurant, when you visit the Ethiopian, 
when they're eating their anjara, what their culture is that. So whatever we are discuss, discussing here has not yet been implemented. If only this year we can start with those small, small things, then I will say, yes, we are starting to be transformed. Otherwise, we are still in the cloud. Thank you. Thank you very much for that point. And uh, you have really touched a very important point because if some of you who know UBC, most of the offices around there when it is lunch time, you expect them to be in upscale hotels, Serena, but if you go down there where they sell, for example, the Etisots, you'll find them in their place, they're eating their bow or whatever, the achoris. So I think they are trying to discover it by themselves, but if we also we can bring it up, somebody would actually come for that one, but in the long run, they also discover the other bigger things connected to this one. Somebody has come for lunch here, either at Ibamba or where, and then they get to know that the whole culture is actually, that is just a tip of the iceberg. So I think it is a very important point that we as museum officials, we shall have to take serious. Yes. Sorry, um, I've already spoken, but I'm just, I, I thought this might be a good addition to the conversation. Um, one of the key issues that we are faced with in uh, the Africanization conversation is whether we have the expertise for now to even think African. And I, I must admit that even those of us who are taking lead on this are having an exploratory journey. We are on an exploratory journey. And we must recognize this as an important aspect of um, of this conversation. If we do not recognize it, then we are going to go on a journey that is quite uncharted. And until you recognize that you need, um, you need information and you need to learn something, then you will not learn it. And uh, we know that, for example, in our museums, if you look here, um, Mr. Williams has already left, but with him we are in very good hands about, uh, about our past of museums, and uh, Mr. Chizalwa here. But uh, most of the stuff here, and if you come here, Mr. Chizalwa will not take you around, he's not the guide. So that means that we need to have young professionals that are grounded in this. And uh, there are not very many. Uh, in Uganda, we don't have cultural heritage studies, except recently to answer to this question, at the Cross Cultural Foundation of Uganda, we worked with four universities to design a Bachelor of Cultural Heritage Studies. And I would like to invite you to explore the pro prospectuses of uh, Chambogo University, Uganda Matters University, the Islamic University in Uganda, and Kabale University has mainstreamed some of those aspects in, uh, in, their, uh, in their other programs not yet at a bachelor's level. But those three that I first mentioned have it as a bachelor degree. It has been fully accredited by the National Council for Higher Education. So now your son or daughter can go to one of those universities and study a bachelor of cultural heritage studies. We think that this is going to create the expertise that we need to think African, get the knowledge from our communities and, and present it the way we want it to be presented. That is only a starting point. Um, then the other thing is we, we, we are also th still thinking, and uh, this is really also exploratory. We have created um, a, Uga a National Railways Museum in Jinja, which is an aspect that is from, it's, it's part of a colonial legacy. And as he said, we cannot say that the, ra the, the colonial is not ours. It has become ours, whether we want it or not. And so we are presenting narratives about, colon about the railways and our experience, because in museums we, sto we sell stories, perspectives, and experiences. So around March, it's going to open, and at the, the cross culture Foundation of Uganda, you are going to see an advert. We want a manager for that museum. Uh, we have about four other positions that are being advertised at the Cross-Cultural Foundation of Uganda. So if you are excited about joining our team, please 
uh, look at our website, you will see advertisements, even on our social media channels, you will know how to join our team. Uh, well, I'm also uh, transitioning as a deputy director, so uh, my position has been advertised. If you want to come to the cross culture, well, I understand it's unusual for people to advertise their own positions, especially here in Africa. But um, I want to invite you to why not take my position because I'm transitioning. Thank you. Thank you very much for that kind of information. And most notably, you have talked about the education. And I think it is good, like, as we are Africanizing, as we are identifying somebody who knows to, how to weave to make that mud, we should also consider the formal education, how we can also tap into that area. For example, I wanted to pursue a Master's of History from Makerere University. And I was told I cannot, I'm not eligible because I should have pursued history right away from the beginning. And, but my profe uh, the professor, I think Mohamed Sian Debeza told me that he was feeling my pain because for masters, they expect somebody to be interested in that field to come there. And now they are limiting you because they are not becoming multidisciplinary. So I think as our project comes into uh, shape, we need to also bring on board stakeholders like the academic institutions and we make them know that if somebody picks interest in this field, already with prior knowledge about it, I think they should not limit it to a certain discipline. And by the time I applied, they had only got only three students. Maybe I think those ones are the ones who have done history, <laughs> even on an undergraduate. So I think as we are promoting the ones with experience, which they have got maybe through oral history or through uh, their cultural institutions, we also need to think of how we can, because the curators are going to come from there, most of them are going to come from the formal or the academic institutions. So I think it is a good point, but we can see how we can also liaise with the formal institutions so that we can have diversity. So I think we are running out of time, but some of us who have not been part of this project would like to know uh, what, are going to, what are the outcomes of the projects like, what are you envisioning if we have trained us A, B, C, D and presumably we have adopted? What are going to be the possible outcomes that really we should be proud of and cherish and wanting? Thank you. Uh, well, time, time is taking us. Should we, can we have that discussion as we move into the exhibition? Because, uh, because the team is confused getting, getting ahead of our time. Okay. Uh, maybe so, just to answer that question, this exhibition is a process. It's an experiment. The moment we give you the output now, it will be like cheating exams. So by the close of the exhibition, we are, try we are going to put up so many observations which are going to inform. So maybe just not to preempt, <laughs> we can now see other things. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for the input. Uh, we, we are done with our, pro, our, our formal program. We now should lead to the exhibition. But before we got the exhibition, I would give Mr. Phil Balimunsi as uh, one of the project members two minutes. Give us an overview of that exhibition as the guest, uh, the guest of honor takes us. Because you know, not all exhibitions are self-explanatory, so I, I, we take this opportunity, you give us an overview that will give everyone a chance as they, they look at the exhibition. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm not going to give the usual narrative and conversations curators give uh, because I don't have it. You have it. <laughs> um, this exhibition is a multi-layered conversation and uh, at all stages and at all levels. This was the first level. Uh, it's the start and the end in its own way. At all levels, you are the custodian with the knowledge that you've come for. What this exhibition sparks is to make sure you write your own story before you leave. At least you leave a portion of your story as you go back to meditate, to meditate upon it. Um, 
It has about three or four sections. We have this section here, which is not yet open because of these seats. We have another section at the reception, which is around there, where you see um, the names of the participants and so on. Um, that section gives you an overview of what has been running into the minds of the participants. But we decided not to write an entire article. We decided to juggle the words to form the, fu the future museum structure in form of words. So whatever words members have contributed since the start of this project, that was December last year, to date, has been put into that structure, which is the face of the museum building. So we've constructed a new museum using words because we don't have money for the bricks. And because we, bre we believe museum represents memory. Let's start with the memories, and that's what we've put at the reception. So that when you, you, you step a little bit further, you sort of decipher the museum building, the face around there. But in there you have words that have been um, triggered by members. Then when you enter into, through that door, that's the main exhibition space. That's your space. That's where you're supposed to perform. That's where you're meant to experience, explore, but also contribute. Contribute, I'll leave it at that. Whatever way you want to, to sort of take that. You have your own sort of section that you're going to curate. So you're a co-curator. When they invited curator to, curators of the exhibition to speak, I loved the fact that our colleague, Mary, joined us. You didn't do anything wrong. You're a co-curator, and by the time you step out of that exhibition, you feel part of the exhibition. If you delegate it to us, then you're not Africanizing yourself. You're, you're going in there to contribute, but also to explore, to curate, and join the conversation. And at the end of this exhibition, we shall have all those responses and contributions as to that project. Then as you come back, you'll, you'll see something unique about this space the moment you come back, and that will lead you to a conversation around this installation here, around this um, showcase. Welcome to Facing Our Past. If you haven't interrogated your past, reflect before you go in there so that you come back with the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Philip. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to invite everyone to follow the team on the table, possibly be ahead of us. We officially launch. And I take this opportunity to welcome.
panel. It's, we request you to the person received because they can speak by themselves about that object. For example, this object corresponds to this empty. You write speak to two, two, pictures. two papers, two stickers, is yours. two stickers, different color, two stickers, and a pain. So this is the object for this space. And stickers. Mr. Williams, you have a sticker? Okay. Don't know what it is. Two stickers and you, pa you pick your a pack of...